Hello students, I welcome you all once again to the e-learning sessions of automobile engineering. Myself Hardik Shah and during this lecture series, we will discuss some interesting topics in the subject of automotive electricals and electronics. We have already started a new chapter and our today's topic in this video is OBD device. Okay, so it is onboard diagnosis device. I hope you will see this video till the end to completely understand this topic and gain your skills in automobile engineering. I also request you to note down any queries which arises during the lecture and ask me it in comment section. I will uh, try to solve all the queries as soon as possible. So now let's start our today's video. So what is OBD? So OBD is actually acronym of on board diagnosis system. Okay, it is an automotive electronic system which is capable of a self diagnosis indicating the reporting the possible problem with the vehicle okay so it gives you and your technician the opportunity to easily access the information about the health of your car and solve the problem okay it provides vehicle protocol and system checks all in possible connectivity via bluetooth or wi-fi okay the definition of the obd is actually in the explanation of its acronym that is the on board diagnosis okay or you can say diagnostics so the basically it helps you with the diagnostic of the current health of your car and predict any future damage or accident okay an important part is known as an ecu which is the acronym of the engine control unit and that is practically the vehicle's brain in regards to the gathering of all the information about your vehicle okay so why it is important and how to use this obd okay so obd is actually very important and helpful for either your personal car usage or for your fleet management business okay it provides and measures the overall health of the vehicles and uh, driving pattern okay so it is highly recommended to use the businesses with a high volume and use of the vehicle on the daily basis okay so for personal use the obd is mostly used in a personal car okay as an indication of the current health of the car okay however based on the provider you can adjust it for the plenty of the possible benefits such as parental control thereafter crash detection remote start and many more okay second is for a fleet management business so it is possible to see the overall health of the each vehicle but also what part of the vehicle is wearing down faster and therefore you can replace it easily okay so it will be also indicating what parts are wearing down faster than the others okay so diagnosis of the problem within the vehicle even before it appears okay it supports the effectiveness of the fleet management and proactivity so obd measures several aspects of the car such as speed idling time driving behavior moreover win number chassis number etc also okay now let's see a brief history of the obd and obd2 so the history of the obd is goes all the way back to 1960s when several organizations have started talking about the how necessary it is to have the onboard diagnosis to detect the emission failure fastly okay so the obd system was actually first introduced in india in the year of 2010 okay which is limited to light duty vehicles and as per the recent bs6 mandate all the vehicles manufacturers are uh, uh, post uh, april uh, to 2020 are uh, need to equip with the obd2 system but let's see what is the global history of the obd so in 1968, the Volkswagen introduced the first OBD uh, computer system with a scanning capability. In 1975, Datsun company started using the OBD computers in the consumer vehicles. In 1980, General Motors implemented an interference and a protocol to test the engine control module, that is the ECM. Okay. In 1998, uh, in 1988, the California Air Resources Board required to have at least a simple OBD capacity, uh, capability in all the vehicles which are sold in California from the model of the 1988 and newer uh, models. Okay, in 1994, the California Resources Board pushed the further issued OBD2 specification 
which is sold in the model okay thereafter in 1996 all the cars which are sold in a global market need to be have a obd2 compatibility okay in 2001 the european uh, markets make it mandatory for the manufacturers to include the eobd in all the gasoline vehicles sold in the european countries okay in 2004 the european union makes it mandatory for the manufacturers in uh, to include the obd2 version in all the diesel vehicles which is sold in a European countries. In 2006, all the vehicle manufacturers in Australia and New Zealand were actually required to use the OBD2 compatibility. Okay. In 2008, all the vehicles which are sold in United States are also required to have the OBD2 as per the ISO standard. Okay. And thereafter, in 2010 to 20, in India it is implemented. So let's see the main difference between the OBD1 and OBD2. So OBD1 uh, is what is that the so OBD1 the vehicle manufacturers defined their own set of codes in OBD2 all the codes that are set that is the fault codes are common universally and across all the types of the vehicle okay in OBD1 uh, technological limitations are prevented certain category of the fault codes are being detected for example you can say that uh, emissions related codes okay in OBD2 the strategically placed sensors triggered the precious fault codes uh, detection in the it okay in obd1 every vehicle had a unique uh, scanner that reads fault code on the particular vehicle only in obd2 it actually utilizes universal data interface so one scanner is used for all the vehicles okay all type of vehicles in obd1 it uses the cables to connect with the car in obd2 it uses the wi-fi or bluetooth for accuracy okay so accuracy is less in obd1 and it is more in obd2 and obd1 have less advanced features compared to obd2 okay so what is the main importance of this obd that is onboard diagnostics so diagnostics problems before it occurs that is the first one thereafter it enhances the vehicle's occupant safety uh, thereafter it reduces the service cost and time then monitors the driving behavior idling air fuel ratio etc okay thereafter flexible compatibility across all the vehicles okay so the onboard diagnosis is, uh, is a clever piece of the machinery which actually senses the uh, data all over the components of the car whenever there is a malfunction detected a diagnostic trouble course that is dtc is generated in the obd system okay it is dtc so this course can be either generic or unique as per defined by the vehicle, vehicle manufacturer. So a mechanic or technician which is using the OBD scanner checks these fault codes okay, and pinpoints the root cause of the problem. Okay. So what are these different variations of this course? So I have listed some of the here. So codes starting with a P, capital P, it indicates the problem in the powertrain. Capital B, it indicates the problem in the body. Capital C, it indicates the problem in chassis capital U it is actually indicating the problem in the network so you can also access the vehicles identification number V number calibration identification numbers thereafter emission control system counters okay and ignition counters also so in other words a mechanic can connect the scanning tool to your car through the OBD2 port and read all the trouble codes to analyze the problem inside the car so the best case scenario is when the mechanic can detect the problem even before it occurs and it can fix it easily directly in a car okay so what is that obd diagnostic connector that how we can use it so in modern car the obd2 port is typically located in the car cabin near the driver seat near the steering cable or steering column okay so you can find it across uh, under, uh, underside of the dashboard or you can say adjacent to fuse box also so uh, here you can see the uh, female 16 pin connector which is actually standard uh, hardware interface for all the vehicles in contrast to the obd1 connector which could be found under the hood of the vehicle the obd2 connector is almost in the case they are required to be within the two feet of the steering column okay or you can say steering wheel so be, uh, beware though the tinkering with the OBD requires special equipments like a scanner, data logger, etc. And also it requires training to operate. Okay. So there are many things which can go wrong if you, do, you are not trained. So always exercise the cautions and follow the manufacturer's guideline for the generation, for the operation of this OBD2. 
Okay, so that's it in today's video. I wish you got the clear idea about the OBD functions, okay, and how the OBD device works. Therefore, if you have any more to know or have any specific query, please let me know. I will surely try to respond as soon as possible. I hope you like this video. Thank you so much. Stay tuned. Goodbye.